article in, uh, in the USA Today where several Christian uh, leaders were quoted, you were one of them, talking about uh, the war on Christmas. And, of course, we've talked about this for years and noted many things that are happening around the country during this time of the year. But uh, you don't subscribe. How do you see the war? Is there a war on Christmas or not? Well, I mean, there there is there is concern by um, uh, evangelicals just at the increasing secularism of our society. You know, the sort of um, uh, we feel like we're we're almost at a post Christian age where uh, Christians uh, will almost be a a minority in, in terms of um, public policy and things like that. And so we we lament that only for a few reasons, but one because we feel the uh, Judeo-Christian values um, are the best um, values for human flourishing because we love our communities. We want to see them flourish. Uh, so we lament that. But on, on, this, on the flip side, um, you know, uh, one of the things I, I was saying in that article, and I, I actually wrote a, a more a fuller treatment of that in, the, in Home Life, which is one of the uh, publications of the Southern Baptist Convention, uh, where I just talk about how Christians really... Um, this is a great time of year for us to tell the most unique and powerful story in the world that that, that God, through Christ, entered the world of sin, uh, that he humbled himself as a baby, that he came, he took on uh, humanity, and he died and, and paid our sin, and he is he's the rightful king who is restoring all things and making all things new. And so as much as we lament uh, the culture slide, away from Christianity, uh, we also don't want to, we, we also want to be the bearers of joy at this time. And, to, and so the basic point is this, that we have the best story. Christmas is the best story. So rather than being upset when the Walmart greeter says, um, happy holidays instead of Merry Christmas, we should be the ones that show by our lives and our joy why this story is so unique. Well, just for the record, you know Walmart employees can say Merry Christmas. Well, that's great. That's great. And, and you know, I think Christians really should be the ones at this time of year who who should be joyful, who should say, hey, we have the, we have the greatest news. We have the gospel message. Um, and, and rather than being upset, people aren't articulating it, people that don't believe, we could say, this is why you should talk about it. This is why you should think about a Merry Christmas, because it's such a great a great story. Daniel, do you, do you think it's wrong? I mean, obviously Christians should be joyful, not only this time of the year, but always. Um, and nevertheless, Christians can still be concerned uh, about abortion, for example, or other things that are going on in our culture. I mean, you can do both, can't you? I mean, is, is it, in your uh, perspective, is it okay for Christians to be joyful and yet at the same time go to the manager of a local store who no longer allows Christmas to be mentioned and express your concern for that? I mean, does does expressing your concern about the seculariz- secularization of the culture, is that the uh, working against still being a joyful Christian? Can you do both? Well, I think I think so. I mean, I think um, particularly when it, when it comes to public policy, um, you know, part of uh, being a faithful Christian is not, is, is, is um, being prophetic in the culture and also um, fighting for justice. And so you think of um, issues like abortion and, and gay marriage. Uh, these are issues where um, we as Christians are applying the gospel to our communities. And if we are to do, as Jeremiah told the exiles, to seek the welfare of our cities, you can't do that without being involved in the social structures of the city, involved in public policy, things that and, and speaking against injustices that trap innocent people. You know, you think of abortion, you think of other, other things like that. When it comes to, um, you know, um, stores and, and them saying Merry Christmas, I, I think, you know, the one thing we want to be careful of is we don't want to necessarily baptize um, commercialism with Christianity. Did you see what I'm saying? And so um, private businesses obviously have to make choices that, that are good for them. Uh, yeah, I don't I, think I, I don't think anybody. Excuse me for interrupting you, just for lack of time. What's that? Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you, just for lack of time, Daniel. The, the, just let me frame this for our listeners a little bit better. Uh, 
the article in the USA Today was about Christians who don't believe there is a war on Christmas, and they're sort of saying we're not like you know those Christians who do. That's what the article was about. It was based on a, I guess it was out of the Tennessee and the Nashville, Tennessee, and at first, which is, which is you know, I was reading the article and I was kind of like, yeah, I was kind of like, why does it have to be either or? And and there is a war on Christmas. It's a it's part of a a, a, a greater war on Christianity going on in America by secular progressives. And part of that is to uh, do away with Christmas. That's why we've seen all these stories over the last few years. And because the first six letters of the say, word say Christ. I, say I think Christ. That that's that's why going. they want to get rid of it, because that's why you want to see, you're seeing nativity scenes taken down that have been there for decades. That's why you're seeing schools say you no longer can use Christmas uh, Christian carols in your Christmas, no, excuse me, your winter Pro, yeah, winter. The winter program uh, parades are being renamed holiday parades uh and, and even in the stores which by the way we've seen a lot of stores now go back to christmas um using the word christmas you know everybody's wanting to say the, the trend was to holiday shop well nobody holiday shops nobody shops for new year's day right nobody shops for thanksgiving they christmas right. shop so what, what we're saying daniel is the word itself is under siege by the secular progressives they're trying to remove it because it reflects on our Christian heritage. And so it bothers me when I read quotes like yours and others in, in this article basically poo-pooing the whole thing. And saying, well, I, I, that wasn't my intention. I think, I think there's a couple things. I think, one, the, it, you know, if there is a war on Christmas, it goes back to the garden. I mean, it's, it's, it's the war that has, has raged uh, between the seed of, of the woman and the seed of the serpent. Um, and so that that has been it's not a recent thing it's 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 um no but it, no it is yeah. a recent thing the war on christmas and, and then, is a recent thing in the last the last well, decade or if so I could, if i could finish and the second thing i would say is um christ is triumphant you know over the serpent and so the story of christmas is that christ has won that he has defeated sin and death that he's he's the rightful king who's who's uh, restoring all things he has um he has redeemed us by his blood, and we have freedom and forgiveness. And so it, even as we lament the sort of minimizing of, of Christianity in our culture, and we do lament that because we feel it's the best thing for human flourishing in our society, we also can have joy and say, um, you know, we can tell the world, and we, you know, Christians need to be the ones at Christmas that are joyful, that are saying, hey, this is why this story is important. Um, let me tell you why it's so compelling and why you want to say Merry Christmas. So let me tell you why. You know, uh, many people uh, who are not believers probably don't understand it, and and it's and it's hard to force unbelievers to articulate the Christian message. Uh, but the way we do that is by our joy and by our uh, by our living out the gospel in a radical way that is so compelling that they say, "Tell me more about this story of Christmas." and we believe it's it's one of the unique times, one of the great times for evangelism to tell the great news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, and uh, we, we should be prepared to do that. So I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. If a company changes its policy and removes the word Christmas from its store, do you think it's wrong for a Christian to approach that company and say, I think it's wrong, and... I think I know why you're doing it, and so I'm not going to shop at your store. Do you think Do you think it's wrong for a Christian to do that? Well, I've, I don't think so. I think every Christian has to make those decisions, and every business owner has to make the decisions that are best for him. Um, I, you know, I would encourage people um, in their activism, and we encourage activism, uh, to be winsome, to be gracious. You know, you might sit down with that business owner and say, yeah, I'm a little concerned um, by this, and but let me tell you why we feel the Christmas story is so compelling and so important, and kind of use that opportunity uh, not just to to get him to reverse his decision, but also to maybe um, hear out the Christmas story and come to faith in Christ. Mm -hmm. And and you might be able to, in that what seems like a negative situation, um, maybe an evangelism opportunity where uh, you might convert him to Christianity. And I think whatever we do, you know, you think about First Peter, where Peter. Uh, overwhelmingly talks to people who are uh, marginalized Christians in their culture, and he says, have courage, 
but he also talks about civility and he talks about uh, kindness and um I, so I Daniel, we, we couldn't agree both. with you we couldn't agree with you more brother uh, whatever activism you take in life as a christian you must represent jesus and you must be kind right. and gracious and you must be uh you know, thoughtful of the other person's soul. No, no question about that. So we, we couldn't agree with you more. Um, it's just that when you say things like, you know, in this article that, uh, instead of, um, trying to force, that for, force that weary Walmart worker to say Merry Christmas. I don't know anybody that does that is what I'm right. saying. And, and, and your caricature of a Christian is some bully who's going up, you know, sort of trying to make somebody say Merry Christmas. And I don't think that's I don't think that happens. And and Walmart, by the way, does allow for their employees to say Merry Christmas. So yeah. I, I appreciate your perspective and thank you for coming on, my friend. And maybe we'll talk and, again. Yeah, some, we hope to have you back yeah. on sometime. Thank you. Yeah, Daniel. thank you. This was great. I, I really okay. appreciate it. Appreciate what y'all are doing. And anytime uh, you, you you'd like to talk, that'd be that'd be fantastic. All right. Thanks, Daniel. Mer- Merry, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. No, I said it first. <laughs> All right. No, thanks. seriously. Have a good have a Bye. good Bye. Christmas. All right. You're listening to today's issues. That was Daniel Darling, Vice President of Communications for the uh, Southern Baptist Convention Ethics, Southern Baptist Convention's Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission.